Hello, welcome back to the channel. I feel like working in tech has definitely been romanticized, but what is it actually like? working in tech. I thought I would do this day in the life slightly differently. So as I'm showing you what a day in my life looks like working as a marketing director at a financial tech startup company, I'll also talk a little bit about my overall experiences working in marketing, working in tech and working from home all of these years. If you're new here, I do work as a marketing director at a financial tech startup here in Vancouver, Canada. I started out as a marketing coordinator and have slowly sort of worked my way up to my role today. You'll see a lot of my day in the life videos still be titled as day in the life of a marketing manager. And I just wanna give a little disclaimer about the title of my job because the title that I currently hold is marketing director or director of marketing but i think just something to keep in mind because that may sound really unachievable as you're starting out your career is that when you work at a startup and you manage a small team that is going to look largely different than if i was working at a large enterprise at a large corporation and i was the director of marketing there so what that title really means is yes i do manage a team but i also have kind of stepped back because I still do work on the day-to-day -day, but I have sort of also stepped back to strategize for the business to look at the business from a greater point of view and have been included in more of like the business planning financial planning goal planning side of the business so if you're wondering like okay what's the difference between a marketing manager and a marketing director i think it definitely varies company to company but for our company that has been the biggest difference as far as those two roles have been so as a marketing manager i did a lot of the i guess more like day-to-day -day tasks like you know running the website running our socials organic marketing seo working with contractors all of that and then really the biggest addition to this direct director level role is working more high level business strategy, business planning and all of that. So do I still work on all of the things I did as a marketing manager? Yes, I do. But it's just that I'm a little bit more involved in the business now as a director. But yeah, that's kind of me and my role in a nutshell, I guess. So I do have a meeting to kind of kick off my day. It is a little early still, but our specific contractor that we have the meeting with today is working from a different time zone, hence why we do have this earlier meeting. No, it's actually been raining. It started out snowing today, but now it's sort of like warmed up. So it's just turned into rain. Uh, my opinion would probably be that we call the user. I think we've tried surveys in the past. All done with my first meeting. I thought I would go over some of my daily responsibilities or even like just responsibilities in general for my role. Side note, I have been trying these Magic Mind little shots. They're like a they call it a productivity shot. I understand that they're supposed to be helping you boost your energy and focus and give you more mental clarity due to like the nootropics in here as well as the matcha, but oh, they do not taste good. Let me just say that. That is truly it tastes like something I used to have to drink because my parents made me. I'll let you know how I feel once this kicks in. My responsibilities are largely surrounding our organic marketing. Our team is unique because we don't have a sales team. Like we don't have a dedicated sales team. We do have more of an inbound customer success support team. And then there's the marketing team. We do implement and use paid ads and PPC to kind of give our business a boost. But majority of our work as a marketing team still revolves around organic growth, email marketing, website marketing, SEO, other forms of customer communication like in-app and transactional emails and sort of using all of those channels to help us A, build a larger client base, but 
B, also to engage our current client base. I would say my role is a pretty good mix of strategic planning, creative execution, and then collaboration with various teams. So with other companies that are under the same parent company, with our internal development team and customer success team, with our clients, with our shareholders sometimes, and then with any of the contractors that we use for various specialized marketing tasks. Working in tech definitely has its own unique set of challenges as well. You are sort of almost at the mercy of a lot of both your software and hardware partners. So in our case specifically, because we work in FinTech, there can be challenges with some of the third party like apps and tools that we use. If there's anything that's going on with their business, that trickles down to our clients. We're also at the mercy of Apple and Android because their app stores all have very unique requirements. When we're thinking about our pricing model, our strategy, what we can include in the apps, a lot of that will depend on what Apple thinks is okay or what Android thinks is okay. And it's a matter of sort of marrying all of these requirements and rules and regulations, approval timelines, all into our decision-making process. There's also this need of having rapid changes and being able to quickly iterate on a product as well as squash bugs. And you know, we obviously do a lot of testing before we release anything, but even then issues may arise. And when they do, it's like our, our process is grounded and built out enough so that we can very, very quickly resolve those issues. But on the flip side of that is you're getting to touch a lot of projects. You're getting to do a lot. You're gaining just an incredible amount of experience because you have so many roles to fill because you're working on so many different aspects of the business all at once. I am working on a brand new website for one of our sister brands. So we have been in the process of helping each other, I would say. So I have been delegated the task of creating a new website and sort of creating a template for websites so that we can really have this unified look. I still am also working on the translations project. That is taking a little bit longer, not just because there's a lot of coordination that needs to be done with the actual contractors we're planning to use, but also because we've had to schedule out these like website releases because there has been other changes to the website that we've had to prioritize. I needed to release these things first so I couldn't make the changes on the translation side because if I did then it would have to be bundled in with some of the more recent releases. So we finally sort of have set a good baseline of where we are with releases and so now we can finally get back to this translation project get it through the door and kind of bundle it in with our next website release. I am now working on the website. Mika's being absolutely adorable. Let me show you. Hello, doggeron. You see, just put yourself in the little corner there. It's looking at me like, hello, leave me alone. I'm just chilling. So part of what I'm trying to do here is help this company really clean up their sitemap and make sure that the more pertinent information is being displayed on their homepage. I guess fix the hierarchy of their site because right now it's a little bit hard to understand the way that they've set things up. I also have been coming through some photos on iStock as well. So our company specifically, we do use iStock to purchase any stock images that we need. I find that if you do dig a little bit, there are some pretty good lifestyle type photos and you're not just going to get your basic really stocky stock images. So let me give you a sneak peek what I have so far. Obviously the images need to be changed, but I've just started laying out their info in a very clean way. I am feeling feeling pretty productive, like pretty energized. So Magic Mind, I think it's working. Was it worth that brutal drinking process? Oh, I mean, it's a shot, so it goes down pretty quickly. It was brutal though, I'm not gonna lie. That's my honest review. Honest review of Magic Mind. I'm having some leftovers for lunch today. We actually made pork belly and bean curd with some carrots. It's actually just like a braised pork belly dish, but I added bean curd and carrots because it just adds some more fun texture and like flavors to the dish. Mmm, it's real good. Okay, I ran some errands for like the first half of my lunch break. My 
web developer actually messaged me while I was away and she's missing some imagery so let me just try to export those for her so she has those for our site also some books just arrived in the mail and let me show you my book stack really quick Ta -da! These are some new business books that I picked up based on the recommendation of Ali Abdal. I just picked up some books that he's been recommending in his videos for quite some time. Kind of help with my career, but also to help with my business as well. So let me go through these with you in case you've been looking for some business book recommendations. I have two books from Simon Sinek. I have Start With Why, which is quite a famous book. You might have seen his TED talk floating around the internet. It has been very popular on the internet for a very long time, but it essentially talks about why your business needs a why because it's the why that's going to drive people to want to follow you to want to build that business with you and then the infinite game sort of talks about a similar concept except that the infinite game talks about the just cause and the just cause it's the even bigger vision than the why the just cause really talks about the future and the why is like the root of your company i also have traction which is really then diving into more of like the business plan and your goals. Then I have The Millionaire Fast Lane, and I'm also reading The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss on my iPad. I think both of them sort of go through mm, the nitty-gritty of building a business, how you can think about work and your business and career in a different way. I also have The E-Myth Revisited, Why Most Small Businesses Don't Work and What to Do About It, another sort of like very, very classic business book. It's written by Michael E. Gerber, who is a small business uh, consultant and has been forever. And he really just talks about the things that get in the way of building a business. And then the last one, not really fully related to business, but I think you can apply it to business, you can apply it to your life, but it's Charles Duhigg's new book, Super Communicators. I think being a good communicator just matters so, 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 so much in all areas of your life, in your relationships, in your friendships, in your family relationships, in business. Like this is an invaluable soft skill to have just as a human being. I'm really trying to like fast track these nonfiction books. I haven't really been reading nonfiction books for quite some time now. I've really been using reading as like a bit of a self-care thing for me. So reading a ton of fiction. And I'm not saying that I'm gonna stop doing that because I'm also still reading Sirens and Muses right now, which is a lit fic book but i think it's time that i really just start learning like i'm craving learning lately anywho lunch i'm gonna make sure i get these images over to her I'm all for the message that Tim Ferriss is trying to imbue in the four hour work week, but in this little bit, he's like talking about this example of this guy who had left a law firm and started his own surf business. But as he's describing like his life now, he's saying he started a premier surf adventure company based in the tropical paradise of Florianopolis, Brazil. He had met his dream girl, a karaoke with caramel colored skin named Tatiana. Like, why did you, I don't know. Does it bother anyone else that he described her like that? Like you couldn't have said a smart karaoke girl yet to mention the color of her skin. Like that's kind of random. Okay, I'm waiting for my developer to get back to me about the images so i thought i would quickly go over skills and requirements that you should have when working in marketing in the tech industry specifically i'm sure this would also apply if you were working in marketing in another industry but yeah my experience obviously comes from tech so here are some of the things i think would be really helpful i don't want you to see this as like a holy crap i'm missing a lot of these skills or i need to like learn these skills in order to even apply for a job. That's not what I'm saying at 
all. I am really just sharing this as sort of maybe some idea and thought starters into what you could work on. By no means am I saying you need all of these skills. I'm just saying these are pretty helpful. So the first I would say are probably digital marketing skills and expertise. Now I'm sure there are still a ton of tech companies who implement and want to implement more traditional marketing methods like your radio shows, TV ads, billboards, physical marketing, event marketing, trade shows. But I do also think that if you're working in tech, which is already obviously a digital industry, that having specific digital marketing skill sets would be really helpful. And I feel like that's really the baseline, right? I think that if you're going into a tech job and you think, hey, you know what? I think that us putting ourselves on the radio would be really helpful. By all means, suggest that. Another really helpful skill set or set of knowledge to have would be some technical knowledge. There are definitely plenty of roles in tech that may not necessarily require you to be super tech savvy, but I think at the end of the day, it will be really helpful. Another would be data analytics. Data analytics should definitely be sort of a baseline skill to have, I would say. I know not everyone likes numbers. I personally am not a numbers girl. Am I an expert at our data analytics? No, but do I have a decent understanding of what we're looking for, how to track things, um, what tools we need to use to track certain numbers. That is the stuff that I've learned on the job and that I think will give you an upper hand when you are applying for a job. Another one would be storytelling and content creation. I think content creation I kind of talked about in the digital marketing skill set, but storytelling, brand story, crafting, all of that is going to be so, so key. I think honestly in any marketing career in any industry. I'm sure there are a ton more, but those are some of the ones that I can think of on the top of my head. I think that the images were good to go because she hasn't responded, which means she's probably utilizing them to continue working on her specific task. So I'm going to check up on my other contractors now to see how it's going with the translations project and then if all is good there and I'm not needed for anything then I'm going to continue working on this web page that I'm designing. I do think that the web page that's in development right now will be completed today so I'm going to just make sure I block off a little bit of time to test it so I can send through any additional comments and then ideally we can get a release through tomorrow. Fingers crossed because that would be awesome because it just knocks out sort of a big thing from my list. I am getting tired. I'm closing in on the end of my work day. I actually do have one more meeting left. Okay, in preparation for this video, I actually message our beloved Discord channel to see if you had any specific questions that you wanted answered in this video as I talk about the realities of working in tech. First being how to avoid getting cabin fever. That's kind of a tough one for me to answer because I naturally am such a homebody. If you can, if your job doesn't require you to be in a private office, I would try to work from a cafe. You can work from the library. Hotel lobbies are actually a really great place to do some remote work because there's always Wi-Fi in the lobbies. There's typically some sort of like a lounge situation and they're for the most part, not super busy during the week. There also is the option of using a co-working space. Ask your company if they can fund that. I think that that's a totally fair ask. I think also just breaking up your day and going for walks, that's going to be another huge one for just kind of breaking out of that cabin fever feeling. Another question that we got was to share some tips to stay focused while you work from home. Another tough one really, um, I think because of the way our brains work in today's day and age, our attention spans are so short and there's just so much stuff to do at home. Like I could sew on my sewing machine, I could do the laundry, I could clean. Like there's a lot of temptation. If you have the ability to create like a workspace, that really helps. So sort of dedicating one area in your home for work. In this current space that I live in, I do have 
have an office. In my last apartment, it was just like a nook that I had for my office. But I think when you dedicate a space to being your workspace and start building up the habit of only doing work in that space, your brain will automatically associate that space with work. So when you are sitting in that space, when you are trying to focus there, it's just gonna be a lot easier and there's gonna be a lot less friction for you to focus. Another pretty common sort of technique that people use is the Pomodoro technique. I personally use this one app called Flow. Flow essentially allows you to set a timer. You can decide how long that timer is. The original Pomodoro technique uses 25 minute time frame. So you do like four 25 minute time blocks of work and then a five or 10 minute break. And then once that timer is up, I can shift my focus or give my brain a break. So I think just giving yourself little time blocks like that to work under instead of thinking, I have eight hours in my day to work and I need to work for eight hours straight. Like that's just not realistic. Like realistically people are productive for about four to six hours like truly truly productive so don't beat yourself up if you're feeling like you can't focus there are tons of other little tricks that you can try to implement to help you with this last call of the day last call of the day hello hello i am doing well i'm definitely getting a little tired <laughs> it's like that awkward time of day where i'm like should i drink one more coffee or is that gonna seriously affect my sleep I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I'm done with the calls, I'm done with the calls. One of the contractors got back to me, so I'm just coordinating with her right now regarding this task. Scan of a few pages and let me know. Alrighty, I don't think she's gonna start. It doesn't really sound like we're gonna finish that communication today, so I think it's time we kick it. Cool, all right, cool. All right, kick it. Does anybody else know where that's from? Or am I completely aging myself in the world of YouTube? I did get one more question on the Discord channel and you had asked for time management strategies. I feel like I've made a couple of videos on this, so I'm gonna try to link some of them in the description box below, but I think some of the best time management strategies are really just like methods and frameworks that I've implemented into my workflow, like time blocking, like using a solid project management slash second brain system, like the one that I have created for Notion. I think this does tie in a little bit with that focus piece that we were talking about earlier, but really it's breaking down the things that you need to accomplish and then prioritizing them and then scheduling them. I think those are like the three steps. And by scheduling, I literally mean time blocking, like going into your day, breaking down those exact time blocks of the tasks that you need to accomplish mixed in with your breaks and your lunches and all of that stuff, defining exactly how much time you think it's gonna take. If it goes over or if it goes under, that's fine. You can adjust as you go, but I think having that structure, at least for me, is how I'm able to fit a lot of stuff into one day and just making sure that I'm getting all of the most important things done. Again, I will link in the description box any videos that I have around time management, as well as some videos that I have around like motivation and productivity. So hopefully that helps. All right, it looks like people are starting to sign off and not respond my messages anymore. So I think that's a pretty good sign that I'm free to go. I'm definitely in a little bit of a learning mood right now. I did read a little bit more of the four hour work week, but I think I'm gonna just catch up on some YouTube videos, specifically ones that do talk about productivity and motivation and wellness and all of that. So yeah, I think that's gonna be like my little mini reset for my brain. And then we're gonna figure out dinner as well later. People and systems to get results that we want for our business so that we can work on our business and not necessarily in our business all of the time.